Greetings everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome to Heal Talk with Lisa, and it is a Tuesday. It's good to be with you, isn't it? May today's session be with an open heart and an open mind. Thank you so much for the wonderful emails I have been receiving, the calls, and I am grateful to be with all of you and so nice to get all the messages and the support that I am receiving. If I can make a difference in your life, either with the suggestions, my techniques, hello Becky, it would, it would do me just. Why? It's because that's what my intention is, to share this moment to make a difference in your life, either help you change a habit, help you become better, feel better, and to give you some information of how you can empower yourself and how you can feel better and become healthier. So if you do not know me, I'm Lisa Bubari. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant. I do have a uh, office uh, and I am in, located in Los Angeles and it's called Heal Within. So the story of how Heal Within came about is because I believe we all have the powers to heal inside. But how many of us really take the time to go in and know that our mind and our body are connected? Well, we do know they are connected. But the power of how our mind gives the information to the body. Let me give you an example. I paused because for a moment I was thinking about my CD called Mind Body Connection, which is for weight loss. And it's not for losing weight because I help people and my clients understand the powers of word, which is when we think about weight loss, it's about loss and losing. So losing and loss subconsciously gives us the feeling of and not a good feeling. Loss in a way is a sad thing. And losing means I lost something and then after a while I'm going to feel sad or I'm going to look for it and I'm going to seek whatever it is that I lost. So the mind-body connection is for the part of the exercise of empowering you consciously and subconsciously to feel good about managing your weight. It's either for people who need to gain weight or the ones who want to drop weight. Why do I say drop weight? Because when we want to drop, that means I let it go. And by letting it go, that means I have full control and I choose to let something go. The mind-body connection is to know that in our subconscious mind, when we tap into our subconscious mind, that's where all the information that it's stored in there, how we emotionally hold on to weight, how we emotionally do things, create the habits and hold on to habits, how we emotionally pack ourselves and embrace whatever it is that we have until it's not good. 
So if you want to make a change, first, we set an intention. The second thing we do is we have to move towards what we desire, what we intend to make the change. Having a goal. Let's say I want to drop weight and sitting over here and doing affirmations of I'm losing weight, I'm losing weight, I'm losing weight. It's not going to make a difference as much as when I set an intention and say, in the next 60 days, this is how I'm going to feel and this is what my intention is to be. As I have explained before, consciously we look, listen, and learn. Subconsciously, we hold on to information because the subconscious mind stores all the information from day one until this very day. Your subconscious mind also regulates all your auto system, your nervous system, and brings back the information. So if there was anything emotionally connected to the weight, and you are holding on to that weight, or you eat emotionally to satisfy a hunger, to satisfy an emotion, a need, a want, sadness, and whatever it is that the food becomes comfort, we must find the reason for the comfort, the reason for the eating, and then once you have it, which I call evoke what was, understanding what was, and then you embrace what is, the reality, the fact of where you are right now, then you evolve to what it is that you desire. So, where am I? This is how I weigh. This is what my habits are. And I want to make the change. Creating my desired goal becomes what I move forward to. So instead of saying, I want to lose weight, or I don't want to feel this way anymore, we turn it around and we say, or you say, this is what I want to create in my life. Because by creating this, it will make me feel better about myself. And when I feel good about myself, I like myself more. And when I like myself more, I smile more. I, whatever it is that you will do. It's, it's the joy within us. It's to feel good about us. No matter what changes we want to make, guess what? We have to feel good about the change that we want to make. Let me give you an example. Long time ago, I had a client come in and she came in to, as she said, lose weight. It was through the, within our first session, we realized that it's not so much about losing weight. It's that she didn't believe that she could lose weight. Why? Because for the longest time she was told you look good. You look good because she was an executive. She had to have that power of, you know, the uh, how, how do I say this? They looked up to her being just a tad of heavy set because they looked up and she was young. Her weight gave her a little bit of a more essence of authority and she carried herself more that way because her mentor that she looked up to was a heavy set lady. Being a young girl growing up, that became the image of a success. That became an image of authority. That became an image of if I have 
a little bit more weight, I will be considered more powered, more of knowing, more successful, and whatever it is that it was embedded in her. Now, what I call that is a story. That is the story she believed in. But guess what? Inside, she truly wanted to become thinner. Inside, she did not feel as confident. Inside, she wanted to be the size 4 instead of the size 10. So by understanding, delving inside, and having an understanding of where that storyline came and why she believed in holding on to that weight, which I call it truly an emotional weight, that is when it was easier for her to let go, peel away the layers of false confidence, false authority, false story. You see, we all have a story. I have a story. You have a story. But isn't it better for you to know what your story is all about? and why you are holding on to that story? Who told you and how you came to believe that story? So, hi Don, hello Patricia. Thank you. Our stories are the things we live by. I remember long, long time ago, my grandmother would have a story for me and she would say, may your life be like a trash can. I know, it sounds eerie. It sounds trash can. Why would anyone say such a thing? But for the longest time, I didn't understand why that story. Until one day when I was grown up, past college years, it came to an understanding of why is grandma saying that? So I asked her one day, I said, you know, you've been having, you've been saying this to us for the longest time, not only to me, my cousins and everybody else. I said, grandma, what does really, what does my life have anything to do with trash can and she said the trash can means you always fill it up with all kinds of trash and then when it's full you have to empty it isn't that a beautiful way of understanding her concept of what it is but to me as a young girl i didn't understand it until now I understand what a beautiful metaphor it is. It can be a story that it's no longer necessary for me to hold on to. It can be an overweight, that the weight is no longer beneficial to me and it's time for me to let go. It can be a habit, it can be a friend, it can be a partner, it can be anything. It can be a job that we are holding on to and that it's no longer beneficial and we are afraid to let go and pursue what we are good at. And if you are good at something, if you truly believe in your life that you have a passion but you have been afraid to follow your passion, isn't it time for you to bypass the fears? Because what is fear? It's false emotions appearing real. It's not reality. The same way as we are afraid to touch something thinking it might burn us. Well, if we have been burned once, we know that we no longer need to touch that one thing. But it doesn't mean 
that every time I see something similar is going to be the same thing. It's the same as if I've had a bad relationship a long time ago. It doesn't mean that every single person that comes into my life is exactly the same. Because if I have learned, if I have been through that, I get to know myself, hopefully better. And I look for the best in life. What changes have you made in your life? Has this helped you? Has replenishing your drinks helped you? Has pushing that calm button helped you? I got an email just two days ago and saying that they feel so much better because they have been practicing the tools by listening to my video. I am grateful that the technique has helped you. As a matter of fact, this session, the last five minutes of our session, I would like to do a guided visualization for you so that you can close your eyes and know and delve deep within yourself and let go and drop layers and peel away layers of the things that no longer are beneficial to you. Hi, Amy. In life, we make the changes. We trust above. We trust God. We trust the universe. We believe in our own abilities. So that's why I say pray up, but trust yourself. Today, just a few, few moments before I went live, someone sent me uh, a text saying, I have a gift for you. Thank you for thinking of me and bringing me a gift. A gift of your travels. Two days ago, I got the most beautiful gift. My colleague went to Sedona. And knowing that Sedona, Arizona is so special, going for the hike on the mountains that have energy and being in the center of the vortex of energy, she brought me this beautiful rock. Thank you, Sandra. But this beautiful rock represents what for me? It represents energy. It represents a part of Mother Earth. It represents strength. It represents to her that I am a part of the rock in her life. I am grateful for being a part of you today. And remember that you are a part of someone else's life. You are a rock in someone else's life. You have also made a difference in someone else's life. And don't you ever devalue yourself. Because there is a little girl and a little boy within you that is looking up to you. So you empower her or him. And remember that no matter who says what, nobody really matters except the person that you become the rock to and for. So the difference between a gift and a present is when I gift you, is I give you the gift that you want. But when I present you something, I give you a present, is because I present you something that I want. It's my present. That's why we do presentations. A gift is gifting you with what you want. 
Hello. I know you matter. Thelma, you do matter. Every single one of us has the power within to evoke what was, to embrace what is the reality of what's happening at this very moment. If you have a pain, if you have a habit, if you are going through challenges, like I posted just yesterday, the plane crash and the soccer team that lost their lives. And just a few moments later, I also ask for a prayer for their spirit, for their lives, for their family. And I posted something else which was in Riverside, the parish, the inn that lit up all the beautiful lights and there was a celebration. Realizing in our life, one moment we are joyous, another moment there is a loss. But this is what life is all about and is knowing where there is a death, there is a birth. We peel away our skin every single day. Our skin, we also change. So the change that happens either through on top of our skin or within us is the change that we want to make and may the change be for the better. Every single path that you take on your journey, may it be a path of recovery, healing, empowerment, and inspiration, not only to yourself, but someone else. At this very moment, open your heart, open your mind, open all your senses. And as you become one with this present moment, let us take a few moments. Becoming one and do a mindfulness. So sit back if you can. If you are traveling and listening to this, please make sure that you are in a safe place for this guided visualization. And take a moment to take a nice deep breath. And as you inhale, bring in oxygen and vitality inside your body. As you exhale, release all toxins, all negativity. Release all that it's no longer necessary for you to hold on to. Letting go in your own mind's eye. Releasing and let go. And if you have been holding on to some weight, either emotional weight or physical weight, if you have been holding on to a story that is no longer necessary nor beneficial to you, a story that someone either told you or for whatever reason you came to believe them and it's no longer enhancing your life, your body, your sound mind. <sighs> Exhale. And just imagine in your own mind's eye Releasing it as if releasing each and every breath. Sending it into a bubble. And watch the bubbles burst. That's right. Let them go. And become one with the sound of the beautiful music and the gong.
sound of your own breath. And as you become one with everything that surrounds you, no matter where you are, in the midst of all the commotion, the turmoil, the pain, the hurt, the joy. Become one with everything that you are feeling, hearing, and release and let them go. A part of mindfulness is being mindful. And as you fill it, just like that trash can, when it becomes full, empty it and let it go. And again, another nice deep breath. And as you hold on, send all that wonderful energy, light, colors, and release it all the way down, letting it go from the top of your head all the way down to the bottom of your feet, even if you are wearing shoes. Become one with all that is on your body, that it's protecting you, shielding you, safeguarding you, and know that it's been safeguarding your body. It's either layers of clothing, your skin, and allow all the pores on your skin to open and allow more oxygen and vitality to go in through all the pores. Life, vitality, calmness. And if there is any pain in your body, send it to that point of hurt and discomfort and pain. Let the tingling sensation of this very moment comfort and calm the pain that hurt. Hello, Diana. And as you do, just imagine the light of the sun, the energy of the sun, the warmth of the sun, and the heat of the sun warm it, comfort it, become loving. And when it becomes warm and loving, it generates heat. And that heat also melts away pain and very gently wait dissolving it dissolving pain dissolving discomfort dissolving emotional hurt or physical hurt If you have a headache, dissolving that ache. If there is a pain in your heart from a story, from a relationship, from something that someone told you, let it dissolve. Empty the trash and let it go. Let it go. Become one with your own breath, with all that surrounds you, 
and within you. And the healing begins now as you become one with yourself, as you honor yourself, as you come to appreciate and accept yourself for who you are. Because you matter. Set your intention of healing, loving, and know that no matter what is happening in your life, if it is in your body, you are not your body. You are not all your mind and thoughts and ideas and concepts either. You are the essence and the spirit inside this body. So today, appreciate and be more loving to that beautiful spirit, to the rock that you are. The energy of being a part of Mother Earth and Father Son. And no matter what you believe, if you truly believe that things happen to you, know that from this day forward, you can set intention that things start happening for you. And the lessons within. But as you learn, as you evolve, as you become, as you excel, as you heal within, you pass the rock and share it, empower someone else. And today, as our session comes to an end. May you take every step on this beautiful journey, on this beautiful path. To evoke what was, embrace what is, and evolve to your heart's desire. You matter. Until next session, greetings, and I hope that this technique was beneficial to you. I look forward to your emails, to your calls, and share with me what I may be of help to you. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. You are fully aware, fully awake.